Hey everybody, we have an offbeat looking definite integral with a peculiar uh, integrand. Uh, the max function does exactly, it accept, accepts any number of input arguments here. We're just taking two function values. But like, if, for example, just, and it has very natural, like if you did the max of 6, 13, certainly equal to 13. Okay. Now here we're interested in which one of these functions is bigger um, between 3 and 6, the limits of integration right here. Okay. So we're going to start with a few, uh, just some, some fairly obvious statements. I'm not going to try to prove this. X over 4 and the 4 third of X are increasing for all positive real numbers, right? No doubt about that. I'm not going to try to prove that. Okay, uh, this, this just means the same thing as 0. is interval notation less than X. And it's unbounded in the positive direction. You write that by saying it's less than this symbol infinity, which means unbounded positive numbers. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do right now, folks, again, this is more or less a piecewise function in, in, in the way it behaves. And so we got to find out a little bit about it, like what's going on with it, which one of these functions is actually larger in this interval. They may, they may switch roles somewhere in between. Who knows, you know? But uh, so a, a convenient way to do this is just to consider, if you look at x over 4, I'm picking a very super convenient number here, 81. Let's choose x equal to 81 over 16, okay? So we're going to take x to be 81 over 16, which is a number you know, a reasonable sounding number, right? What is that? A number around five or so. So, uh, and we're going to divide it by four, which is what this function does right here, right? Now that's equal to 81 over 16. Okay, now you all can see why I chose 81 over 16. It's an easy, easy pickings for this one. Uh, the fourth root of 81 over 16. So you just take the fourth roots of the numerator and denominator respectively. And so that would be 3 halves. Okay. But 3 halves is greater than 81 over 16, right? So uh, now so we know that between 1 and 2, these numbers are both between 1 and 2, but we know this function, this implies that the fourth root of x is bigger, right? right. In, at this number, okay, I'll just say bigger for now, all right? But we're going to use the fact that this number is a bigger function than the linear function. The linear function will eventually outgrow this guy because taking fourth roots makes the number small, right? But this is bigger... Uh, than the linear function, at least for this value. Now, we'll couple that with the fact that both of these functions are increasing, okay? So it makes quite a bit of sense to find out where the graphs intersect, all right? And we, that's, that's pretty quick work right here. Uh, that would happen when x is equal to uh, 250, uh, excuse me, when x cubed is equal to 256, right? Just by inspection, right? You put 256 right here, you get one minus one to zero, right? Okay, but this is equal to two to the uh, eighth power, right? So I'll write down two cubed times two cubed times two squared, right? And so what we get here, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, x, is equal to the cube root of 2 cubed is 2. You got another 2 cubed there, so you have 2 times 2, which is, I'll just write 4, and then you have, uh, you can't take the cube root of 2 squared nicely, so you, we have 4 times the cube root of 4. Okay. Now, it's important to know that's where these two graphs intersect. That's where the two functions share a common x coordinate. All right. And so what we can, you, you, without using a calculator, you had to kind of just play around with these numbers, but it turns out that x, I'll just write it, it's trapped between 6 and 7, and it's not too hard to see that. And again, it, uh, once you notice that 6 cubed is 216, right? 
six cubed is 216 and then when you when you cube this you get 256 you get you would get 64 times 4 which is 256 okay and then you get 7 cubed which I'm not going to write down I think I know the value but who cares we know that 256 is less than it right all right so what does that tell us that tells us that this function is going to be on top or it's that the function we looked at a moment ago uh, x to the fourth is going to uh, stay on top in this entire interval because it was on top for a value between one and two and both functions are increasing they don't intersect until this value that's past uh, the upper limit of integration you see notice this six here this six and this six right so in other words we're not switching the behavior, you know, because it's we're between three and six, and the intersection point is a, greater than six. All right, so that means that we will choose this function. Now, if we had made this uh, limit seven, we'd have to sw switch off at this point and, and, and split it apart into two definite integrals. Okay, but in any event, uh, this we're picking this one as our max function, right? The max between these two numbers is. Um, is the fourth root of x okay now i'm going to go ahead and just treat this as x to the one fourth and y'all re recall that it has a simple to compute antiderivative uh you just add one increment that exponent and divide by it also so this would be uh, x to the five fourths over five fourths is your antiderivative of course, we're cat. We're, we need to know that because we uh, we're going to make I call it AD, not the year of our Lord, uh, but that stands for uh, antiderivative. Okay, now so what does that mean, folks? Uh, when you divide by five fourths, that's equivalent to multiplying by four fifths, multiplicative inverse, and so we get uh, four fifths. Okay, times. And what we've got, got right here, folks, the standard deal here, fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, 6 raised to the 5 fourths power. And I'm not going to go any further than this, folks. Uh, minus 3 raised to the 5 fourths power. And I have no idea, uh, you know, this is far, I'm not going to mess with this. Uh, probably you can do a little bit of, this would be a nice intermediate algebra problem to simplify this further, I guess. Okay, you probably factor out like the fourth root of three or something. Uh, but, but in any event, I'll just leave it like this. It makes no difference, really. Um, it doesn't even simplify the calculations that much to, to factor it, I don't think. Uh, but in any event, that is it, man. That, that's the solution to this problem. And I hope you liked it. Um, thank you for viewing.